Welcome back to the Hank Strange Situation, Lifestyles of the Locked and Loaded. Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts. You're absolutely no help. Yeah. And, no. Um, and then mm -hmm. to find out that these two actually had a potential personal relationship makes it even worse. Yeah. Yeah. So... No, yeah. So, uh, by the way, if you're watching this, if, you, if for folks out there on the chat, you know, we appreciate you guys. Smash the thumbs ups and everything here. We'll get some comments and everything in. You know, there's so much to talk about on this thing. We're going to we're going to try to cover it. So, yeah, um, I did see something out there that these guys work together at, like private security somewhere. Is yeah, that true? So, uh, or is that, have we verified that? It's called secondary, right? OK, so secondary work is. Hey, uh, your local auto parts store, your local grocery store, gas station mm -hmm. um, needs some security help. A lot of security companies uh, will hire police officers off duty to work these contracts in some places if they have the right insurance can hire you directly. Mm -hmm. Right. So apparently um, George was and it was a, a restaurant slash lounge or something of that nature. George was a, a security officer at that location. Mm -hmm. And Derek Chauvin was also a security officer, but he was an off-duty police officer. Okay. So uh, Derek worked outside. He worked the exterior perimeter. And then apparently Floyd worked on the inside. Okay, so but did they know each least, other? Right, they knew each other. They knew each other. Okay, so mm -hmm. how could you... I mean, I, I, don't, I don't really understand this, man. I couldn't, I couldn't do something like this to... <laughs> to a, a, a human being i couldn't do it to an animal you know how could you step on the neck of a person for over eight minutes that you know i mean how could you do it to someone you don't know and then how do you do it to a person who you know depends on what, what the, i'm not excusing it but i guess it depends on what the relationship is but just because right. they knew each other don't mean it was positive right so there's all so there could be deeper things to these guys relationship we didn't know now i know that the that they did press charges against this police officer within the last uh few hours right yeah yeah they hit him with um manslaughter and um m3 murder three and manslaughter and they said they got other pending charges mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what do you what do you guys think about the reaction of um the authorities in minnesota let's put it that way what do you think about their reaction to this are you happy with that? Not happy? You know. To be honest with you, I'll speak on this a little bit. Uh, mm -hmm. To be honest with you, as far as the uh, the police officers and things like that, as far as their reaction towards, you know, what happened to him. Yeah. No, I'm not talking about the police honestly, officers I, who were there, but after this. After the mm -hmm. arrest and the things that they went. I think, honestly, I think it was actually, I think they did very well. I would say that. As far as in them, because they immediately fired this man. They didn't put him. Typically, what we see, the youth and everything that's been going on right now, as far as, you know, prior shootings and things like that with young black men and black men in general, um, they get on, like, you know, death duty, light duty, and, you know, they get paid leave. This man was immediately fired. Not just him, I believe. And mind you, I, I, there's things I could not know, so don't quote me, because I kind of cut it out, because I try not to put too much of that stuff into my brain. So mm -hmm. um, from what I do know, they they fired the, uh, not just him but the other uh, officers that was around. Him. I think this particular it's guy not... had a disciplinary record as well, right, Kevin? Yeah, In other yeah. words, he had issues. Yeah, well, from what I, last time I read, uh, um, a total of eighteen complaints. Yeah, yeah. Use of force, and he apparently shot and killed somebody. I think in two thousand nine or two thousand six. See that two thousand. Yeah, they, he shot another uh, black man. I mm -hmm. believe that's when that's kind of when I cut it out. Uh, I did see that. Mm -hmm. um, but as far as the way they, they handled it, I mean, immediately firing, not just him, but everybody else that was around him, mm -hmm. from what I know. Uh, and then, you know, actually, you know, taking a step forward and pressing charges on this man also mm -hmm. yeah. within um, days. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's actually pretty good. I mean, charges doesn't mean anything. Convictions is what counts. We all know that. Uh, and it's how you go about it, too. Like, I, I yeah. it seemed to me like they wanted to make sure that they were doing the right process. Because they didn't want to get this case thrown out because they rushed it necessarily, right? Yeah. yeah. I, I do believe that as far as the steps that they're taking as far as their that police department, mm -hmm. uh, I feel like they're, uh, they're, they're moving in the right direction. I haven't seen anything that was bad. I mean, I understand mm -hmm. as far as I, I'm not a, uh, I'm not condoning and mm -hmm. I'm not trying to tell my young people um, to go out there and uh, be looting and, 
you know, doing all this nonsense because you mix a lot of bad things with that. You mix the gang members, you mix the people that's just 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 fire, just the criminals because they're doing they're out there. They're, uh, they're, they're Antifa, there. Antifa, I think, is getting in the middle of that uh, from what we're hearing. Right? We've got militant yep. factions of Antifa getting involved there. I mean, who who really wants to destroy their neighborhoods? Who wants well, to destroy I, I their own neighborhoods? Well, I think that's the part that goes You know, from from even being being look, I am literally. Seven minutes from Ferguson right now. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you from seeing it, it wasn't just the people that live in a community that was doing this stuff. It wasn't. It flat out was not. Tons of cars, out of state plates, people. I mean, you don't know everybody in your area. Don't get me wrong, but you don't even sound like you're from here. Like you're in, you are not from here. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. We don't even wear those type of jeans. And why are you talking like that? Who cuts hair like that? You are not from here. <laughs> right. Like we right. just absolutely know you're not. Right. So, um, Today, there was a video that actually came out. Um, well, I saw it today. Mm -hmm. And it, it was, um, you, you saw, I believe it was the state police in the background. Mm -hmm. You saw a, 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 a decent portion of uh, black men standing out. And then you saw a crowd of, um, a, kind of a half a crowd of white guys. And they were identified as Antifa. Mm -hmm. And what the black guy was saying to him is like, yo, we appreciate your support and we appreciate you being out here with us. Do not take us the wrong way. Thank you for helping, uh, you know, get justice served. Thank you for coming and taking part of the protest. But what you are not going to do is continue to cause havoc because we have to leave here when you go home. And he was Amen. saying that on video. Amen. So that is another piece Amen. of clarification that is not the people that mm -hmm. necessarily live in the area. So when we're telling people to stop looting mm -hmm. and stop rioting, well, I, I broke down all the economic effects of that because, look, Ferguson in one apartment complex alone, that is one of the largest ones over there, Immediately after, they lost forty percent mm -hmm. of the residents. Yeah, that is forty percent. That's a lot of damn people out of one of the largest apartment complexes. Forty yeah. percent. So it's going to be a lot of economic effects. But this isn't the community that is acting wild and always acting out. And you saw that guy today on video. Like, uh, you need to stop because we still have to leave here when you go home. Yeah, yeah. And think about this. And and Ro, I know you probably want to. You've got some things, but just think about this. You destroy the businesses in your own community, you're making it more difficult for anyone to come into your community and serve you. Okay? Their insurance goes up, they've got they've got to somehow rebuild. You know, the, the employees who work there now are traumatized by all of that. Just think about that. If you are if, if you're the people coming into that community and doing that, um, I don't know, man, that's extra shame on you for that, right? But if you're the person in that community destroying your own community, this doesn't help. There are there are mechanisms, there are things that you could do. And we're talking about, in this case at least, this is a community that's run you know, by Democrats. And there's yeah. lots of people of color in positions of power to do something about this and fix this problem in your community. You need to let that, that, that process take place. Uh, at well, least you know, before you, you know you get crazy. Let me, let me say this, and then I'll, I'll, I'll be quiet. But I want to mm -hmm. really make sure people understand this. Mm -hmm. So yes, um, look, I've been I've been talking and discussing civil rights for a long time. All right, and there is and being being able to do that requires some studying. Not mm -hmm. saying that I've read every book and studied every person, but I've done a fair share. And Martin Luther King once said, uh, "Writing is the language of the unheard." Mm -hmm. All right. He also in that same conversation went on to say it is not what we want, but it will continue to reoccur, but it is not something he necessarily condones. He just understands it, mm -hmm. right? And and so what I want people to realize is that yes, we get protest. I don't think anybody's arguing protest mm -hmm. in its purest form. Mm -hmm. Get that, because we all want to see change. Everybody that cares about it, we all want to see change. Might some things be destroyed during the course of a protest? Sure, that might happen. But when you get to all out looting and uh, rioting, and there's two different ways to look at this. We, you talk about the economic thing, and I, I broke it down a while mm -hmm. ago. However, when you look at individuals that are committing these atrocities, what are they really contributing to the legacy of George? Right? You're actually taking attention away from them because all we're talking about now is the rioting mm -hmm. and the looting. That's all we're talking about. Mm -hmm. Right. The news isn't really covering until today when the charges were announced. Half the people weren't even talking about why they were there. So I'm not saying you shouldn't be pissed. You, you should be. I'm not saying you can't be upset. I'm not saying you shouldn't 
forced her hand to drive change, but at the same time, still in a TV does what for George? I mean, really, what does it do? Still in the TV does nothing for him. Um, it, it absolutely serves none. But then there's the flip side of it. There's the absolute flip side of it. And I think this is where Second Amendment people get in, get themselves in trouble. It is okay if you're around the barbecue or the, the, the bonfire talking to your boys and you say something like, man, those, those people need to be shot. You know, you might be saying that out of a little bit of frustration. You don't really mean it. You know, you're just talking to your boys. Mm-hmm. But when you have a sitting United States president that says you loot and we'll shoot, well, that's a problem, Mm -hmm. right? Um, It's a problem for several reasons. One, looting um, is defined as something that is damaging and taking a property, right? Now, a lot of people were like, well, what do you think you should do if somebody is looting your store? Well, guys, let me slow you down. This is why I need people that carry guns to be intellectuals. That's also very important. Mm -hmm. If your business is empty, somebody runs into your candy store and they steal all your candy and they're running out and you shoot them in the back as they're running away or shoot them in the side as they're running away, or hell, shoot them in the face with a handful of candy because you're pissed and because Trump said looters will be shot. Let me explain something to you. You are going to prison, right? Mm -hmm. Because you allow your emotions to take over. (laughs) Yeah. So <laughs> what was what was the exact I'm sorry, Kev, uh, just just to be clear, what was the exact thing that he said in his tweet? Was it you loot, we shoot or looting uh, leads to shooting? To my, I'm just trying to I'll go back to my G yeah. and I will I mean, read it to you. I'm not arguing the fact that Trump says stupid stuff. No, no, no. We, we should definitely we should definitely have exact language. Yeah, I, I'm totally with that. Yeah. Um, um, these thugs are dishonoring the memory of George Floyd, and I won't let that happen. Just spoke to Governor Tim Walz and told him that the military is with him all the way. Any difficulty, and we will assume control, but when the looting starts, the shooting starts. Thank you, with an exclamation point. Okay. So, um, here's the problem when people see that. They're like, damn right, looters need to be shot. All right, cool. I, I feel your emotional response to that. For the business owners that are physically at their business, they aren't defending the M&Ms or the baseball bats. They're inside the business. If somebody is trying to forcefully enter your business to loot your store, you are defending the human life that is inside of that business. You are never defending property. Mm-hmm. That's not what we do. You don't shoot people over property. What you can say is, I defended myself because these individuals were trying to gain access to me, gain access to this property, and I'm here. Mm-hmm. And I defended myself. Don't allow your emotions to land you in prison. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. not the way we, we operate. That's not the way. Yeah, I get it. You're just pissing. You're just talking. But listening to 45 um, is going to get your ass in trouble. You start yeah. shooting people because they're stealing TVs, you're going to go to prison. Yeah. And guess what? The business owners are going to lose their business. They're going to lose all their money because they're probably going to get civilly sued by the looter's family as well. Mm-hmm. So they're going to lose all their money. Mm-hmm. They're going to also lose their freedom. All for what? Because you allowed emotions and because 45 is sitting in his uh, ivory tower telling you, yeah, I'm going to authorize people being shot. Guess what? Joe Biden also said just blast a double barrel shotgun off the back porch and they'll run away. And as soon as somebody did that shit, guess what? He went to jail. Yeah, I, I, yeah, right? for sure. For mm-hmm. sure. Like there's, there's a, <laughs> you know, I uh, th- you cannot put um, property, right? whatever content in your store over a human life okay it's you know now if like you said if it's your life or you're the people who are in your store if you have to defend someone this is a different thing let's let rolando uh chime in here obviously listen rolando you know you're gonna have to you know you're gonna have to jump <laughs> no, no. in here when, especially he, when kevin dixie's smoking obviously He's, yeah. uh, he's the master, yeah, so you, you gotta, gotta jump let him speak, in. especially what, on a roll. Yeah, what do but, you think um, about what do you think specifically here about what uh, the the tweet from Trump? Uh, well, oh, man, well, that's tr- uh, Trump always always finds a way to just put his uh, foot in his mouth when yeah. it comes to a lot of things, and this is no different. This is the guy who it's, said, "Forget about uh, what was it? Forget about uh, due process." Yeah, but due process. Uh, take the guns first. Due process second. Yeah. So, so we we know that that this is what he does. 
But the issue is that when you're in a in such a heat, it's one for it's one thing for him to say something stupid when he's having a normal news day and he's fighting against the Democrats over, you know, what whatever the news of the day is, you know, that they that that somebody's trying to talk crap. But when people's lives are at stake, when a city is burning, when you're dealing with obviously an ongoing case to start injecting yourself into that and to start, you know, escalating the language in that manner, it doesn't help the situation. And I know I know where he was probably coming from. And I know how a lot of this community is with the thin blue line and uh, law and order and all that. So I, I know. That was the audience that he was pandering to, but he's the president of everybody. Mm -hmm. So you can't pander to a specific audience when things are going on, lives are at stake with everybody that's involved. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts.